Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I wanna cover this story that's out of the hedge. I'm gonna link it uh, in the description below. I think it's really important to continually talk about the inflation story, um, especially in regards to oil. Um, you know, I'm, I'm covering inflation in all kinds of different aspects, whether it be lumber prices, um, oil, and food. And I've talked about the breaking points in different times in history uh, when uh, food costs get to a certain price uh, it can stop uh, it could start inciting riots um, but also oil once fuel prices get to a certain point it, it can uh, in, it start uh, a, just a cascade down in the economy right so uh, we've just recently seen where there's job owning um, from the Fed about interest rates and, and inflation and then we've also seen OPEC saying oh we're here to help you know we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pump more oil like look the facts are they want to charge you more per barrel, okay? That's what the oil companies want to do. But they know there's a breaking point, so they're not gonna just go running it up because they know it's not gonna work out, okay? But if they can keep on this inflation narrative, like, yeah, sorry, oil's at 100 bucks, $130 a barrel, but it's not our fault, it's inflation. <laughs> you know, it's not our fault. Then then people are like, well, they start to believe it. Like, well, I guess this is it. You know, this is just the price we're gonna pay. And I even see it in the comment sections where people are like, well, I guess, you know, lumber's this much it ain't ever going down you're like yeah you come on don't be stupid like that everything has an ebb and a flow it doesn't always mean it's going to come uh down to where it was but it's not going to always be super high right because there's a point when people stop buying the facts are oil doesn't always have to stay high if nobody drove it would just like people like just go i'm not going on a vacation and i'm not going on that cruise ship and i'm not jumping on a plane and going somewhere i don't got the money then it collapses because they go, we still need to sell oil. So there's a point where it is a breaking point. It's just, we don't always know those numbers, okay? So here we go. Uh, the article states, we will see $200 oil. Russia and OPEC ministers blast IEA's net zero by 2050 plan as La La Land. Uh, I completely agree with that, but uh, you know, only time will tell. So uh, obviously, uh, the prices are re recovering, like it says, from their COVID-19 slump, right? Because in increasing demand, not only do we have seasonal demand coming in, but we have the increased demand of people wanting to go out and go out to eat, go travel, get life back to normal again, right? So that's obvious. And we're seeing massive supply crunches because of it, right? Um, there's more demand in every sector of the uh, economy right now than was previously planned, which is, is funny to me that people wouldn't know this is going to happen and be prepared. Um, it says on Wednesday, Brent crude futures touched their highest price since September of 2019. Now, guys, I want to I want to remind you. Remember, this is a big thing with me. The economy was in straight up worse than Lehman Brothers collapse in September of 2019 when the interbank lending rate spiked to 10 and a half percent. And the reason why I'm saying it like this, 10 and a half percent, to show you how bad that is. When Lehman Brothers collapsed, it went to. Uh, six per six and a half percent uh when 9 11 happened it went to six percent so to say that it went to ten and a half percent that's because that is worse than the last like it that is hor horrific okay so in september 2019 interbank lending was spiking because banks were collapsing and they didn't trust each other they wouldn't loan to each other and that's when the fed repo window happened and then what happened about a month and a half later that was weird and you know, all of a sudden we got to print a bunch of money got some issues and who'd they bail out first so you, you just follow the money okay guys um so right here uh novak uh commented confirmed the upcoming opec plus conference will address and finalize oil output for august and other months while stressing that oil prices shooting too high may force users to switch to other energy sources that's true with anything like that is the most normal like oh it's like ob it's obvious this or copy on that front in particular he blasted the current iea's proposal and roadmap being pushed which in the end could lead to 200 dollar barrel of oil i think that's what they want um he says uh if the world were to follow the international energy agency's con uh I can't even read right now, their roadmap, which said investment in new fields would have to stop immediately to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2020, 2050. The price 
for oil will go to what? $200. Gas prices will skyrocket. Said the euphoria around the transition to clean energy is dangerous. That is true. Anytime you're transitioning from one technology to another, there's going to be bumps in the road, okay? Nothing is smooth, correct? So I think that the whole point here is, is that even if there are some good points in here and there's truth in here, there's a narrative being built. And once they keep this narrative up about like, hey, just, you know, I know you guys want to go all electric or all wind power, but, you know, in the medium term, expect really bad things to happen with the oil market because as people are shutting down and saying like, you know, the governor of California is saying, hey, no uh, gasoline cars are going to be allowed to be built in California to a certain year, right? Uh, I don't remember what the year he said. Let's say 2035. And people are like, oh, that's a long time away. Well, the thing is, is in that road, there as, as other companies are starting to go more electric, um, there's there's these road the, it's hard to explain right now but there's there's times when uh, as change is happening people don't think of all the consequences that are going to come as effect of their little changes so one company that might be a big auto manufacturer switches to all electric manufacturing and now all of a sudden there's a part parts glut for uh, the cars that they just recently produce are gas burning, right? Uh, just, just a really simple example. But what I mean is that all these companies all around the world are jogging, uh, uh, j moving around and juking and jiving and trying to position themselves best for this worldwide effort to go you know, green. And there's going to be supply issues with parts. There's going to be price increases with, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, well, here, I'll give an example. Uh, a lot of companies that were doing uh, oil, uh, you know, turning oil into gasoline, refineries, they go, you know what? Maybe we want to start moving our operations into green energy. So let's close this plant because we just built this plant. So let's go ahead and close this plant. Well, now all of a sudden you got less refineries. So that could increase prices, things like that. You see what I'm saying? So they're, they're, what they're doing is they're building you a narrative. Um, even though they look like this story looks like, hey, we're fighting for you and look at all the problems. They're building a narrative to show you there's going to be problems. So just deal with it. And see, that's where I see uh, oil. I was told a long time ago after we'd seen the spike to 137 and I was told it was going to crash down to 50, which it did. It took a while, but it, it did. They said, well, get ready because uh, they told me they said the next cycle is three hundred and sixty dollars. And I know I'm mature enough to know as an investor that that's not going to happen overnight over the next couple of years. That's a that's a decade or may, possibly a multi-decade plan. But I want you to think about that. Like, well, let's just say they nail half of it and a barrel of oil goes to 150 in the next, let's say, few years. What is that going to do to the gas prices? But then all of a sudden, what is that going to do? How is that going to translate into all kinds of different goods, all kinds of uh, products around the world because of the fuel cost being so high? So that's what I wanted. To, um, hopefully I didn't ramble too long, guys, but I saw this. Um, read the article let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below do you agree with me do you think that this is a, a narrative that's being built to prepare you for higher prices so that you won't riot in the streets i think that's a, a really important thing to, to consider with that being said guys the economic ninja is out